Melville Broadcasting Network presents this special archival material presented by the late Gladys Jeremiah Beaumont. May God bless you as you listen to this message. Amen. Babylon has been fornicating and not only uh, just fornicating, but even with the kings of the world. You understand? And the kings of the world have got people underneath them. Uh, come on, church. Jesus is talking about the people who hear his voice. Amen? You gotta hear. You see, people sit in the church, but they never hear the voice. Uh, come on, church. They are sleeping. Let me ask you a question. When you sleep at night, you don't know about anything. But does it mean your sleeping won't bring the morning? Our dear and loving Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have brought us again to this point tonight. We want to give you the praise. It has been a wonderful awesome two weeks for us as we came out every night to meet with you and our hearts are a little bit sad as we uh, come to the end of this series it just has been awesome just coming every night together with the brethren uh, to share testimonies to sing together to pray together and to be fed from the holy word um, and we pray that the spirit of fellowship will continue, Father, as we share the good news of the kingdom. Tonight, we pray that you will speak to us once again as you prepare us for the coming of your son. For this we pray and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, t today, the title of our sermon Oh, okay. Uh, children, if you want to stay there, you can stay. If you want to go back to your parents, you can go back. Okay? They might want to stay there. I don't know. <laughs> but um, they are free to go back. Uh, the title of our sermon tonight says, The Final Call. The curtains are coming down. Let us uh, turn our Bibles to Revelation chapter 18, Revelation chapter 18. Yesterday, we were talking about how dangerous it is to fool around with another man's wife. And we learned that the devil has been fooling around with the church. But the day of reckoning is coming. For the husband will come to rescue his wife. As we come to the end of this series, we want to look at the final call. Because I strongly believe, children of God, that we are living in those last days when God is making the final call to humanity. That we must come in to the plan of salvation before the door of mercy is shut before us. And if I can remember uh, right from the time when men fell, God has been calling men to repentance. God has been calling men to come into the plan of salvation. Uh, but I don't, uh, I don't see men taking it seriously as I was looking right through the generations, it was so sad to notice that only a handful of people took it seriously. And we are going to look at that today. But uh, first of all, let's get to Revelation chapter 18. And 
And I would encourage you children of God to dig deep into the book of Revelation. You, you're going to find some things right there. Some things that are going to open your mind and realize the times in which we live. I want to start reading from verse 1. It says, And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and the cage of every unclean, hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of your fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of your sins, and that ye receive not of your plagues. For his sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Now, when you when, when, when you read, you find that this angel, as he came with this message, he cried mightily. It means he cried with power. And his voice was not soft. It was a loud voice. Because if you are going to deliver a message of warning, it can never be a soft message. Oh, come on, church. I said if you are going to deliver a message of warning, it can never be a soft message. It can never be a message that will leave you comfortable because a message of warning requires you to act promptly to hasten on to do what will save your life. It's not a message that I can just go to my son and say, if I came to your house and I saw that your house is on fire, but I came to you and I said, you know what, my son, as I was just passing through, I... I think your house is on fire. What would be your reaction? You see, he, he wants to take me into a conversation, you know? But I'm here to warn him that his house is on fire. And you know, the truth is, the house is on fire. But for him to take me seriously, I have to say it in a way that will be in line with what is happening. He won't take me seriously. And he, 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 he might even say, well, can you sit down or get you a cup of coffee eh? or tea? Right? Because he, uh, uh, my, the tone of of my voice is not serious. But if I came and I said, hey, 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 love and love, your house is on fire. I tell you, they might run just like that. My mother used to say, never go to bed without putting on something. Because you never know what happens in the night. If somebody says there is danger, you don't think of anything. You just think of running. And it happened back home during Guasela's time. The teachers were at a school, 
And the bus used to come and stop there for the night and start their trip back to town from there. And the teachers were sleeping. And somebody from the village came and shouted that Guasela is on his way here. And every teacher and the family, they all ran out into the bus. Some of them were not prepared. I'm not going to go into that. But I am just saying there is danger in not being prepared. You understand? We are talking about the second coming of Christ. And a lot of people are going to be caught unaware, naked. So when this angel came, he couldn't say, Ah, Babylon is fallen. He's fallen. Who would listen to that? But he sounded with a mighty loud voice that Babylon is fallen. Because he was proclaiming a warning. He wanted the people of the earth to do something. He wants the North Edmonton Church tonight to do something. Because danger is on the way. As we studied yesterday in Revelation chapter 12, the Lord revealed to us that this is not a game. This is a matter of life or death. The enemy that we are fighting has no other mission other than making sure that men and women, children, young men and young women, they all perish. None of them are saved. None of them will make it into the kingdom of God. And God made it so clear. And then, as the battle rages on, because you see, the angels know what is going to happen. You understand that? The heavens, they know. Everybody in heaven, they know what is coming down. So when these angels leave the presence of God with a message like that, they are not fooling around. Because they know that God will fulfill everything that he has said he will do. And the angel here is giving the reason why Babylon the Great is falling. It is falling because of its fornication. You see, fornication is when two people who are not married decide to just come together, eh? like married people, but they are not. And uh, when they come together, they can leave. Each one can go their way. And God here is talking about a spiritual fornication. You see, when God created men, he wanted men to worship him alone. Even in the commandment, he put it very clearly. That you shall have no what? No other gods. You should not make idols and worship them. Whether you make it an idol of the things in heaven or the things here on earth. Don't worship them because I am a jealous God. You understand that? Yesterday we were learning about the church and Christ. The church being the wife. Christ being the husband. And if I may ask the husbands who are here. Would you like, I think I asked that question again during this series, that how would you like it, Mr. Ndlovu, when Mrs. Ndlovu can say, you know, I found somebody, and, uh, but you, I still want to keep you. But I also want to keep this one. So I'm going to stay with both of you in the house. You can have your bedroom there. You can have his bedroom. I'll have my bedroom. One day I'm there, one day I'm there. But I don't want you to go, but I want you to stay with me. How would you like that? You can't share. <laughs> you know, this is awesome. You see, man does not want to share what he has. But he wants God to share him with the other things. You, you can't. 
You can't. So the, the Babylon has been fornicating and not only uh, just fornicating, but even with the kings of the world. You understand? And the kings of the world have got people underneath them. Uh, you understand? And as they shift and, and fornicate with the Babylon, they are bringing the people with them. You understand that? Because the people follow the what? Follow the leader. If the leaders are doing it, uh, why shouldn't these other people do it? They will do it. If you as a father are doing it, why shouldn't the children do it too? Because when you do it to the children, it seems it's permissible. There is no problem. It's like when you are drinking and your son is drinking. How can you tell your son to stop drinking when you are drinking? It doesn't work. And so as she fornicates with the kings, the people also underneath those kings are fornicating with her. And the Bible says she has become the habitation of devils. Right? And you know where the devil is, there is anarchy. You know where the devil has made residence, there is death, there is suffering, there is pain. And so the Lord makes a call. You see, these people are so drunk with this woman, whatever she's doing, that they, they can't think properly. Can you think that the world is thinking properly today? Yeah? Do you see anybody who is thinking properly? Who knows what is the right thing to do? Nobody knows. Just today, a friend sent me um, um, an attachment of a newspaper from Jamaica. You see, they've taken that area to do their mission work there. But right now, that place you can go in there because these gang wars have started because they are trying to protect one person who is supposed to be some drug lord whom the United States want. And they haven't been able to get him over there for a year because they were going through all this legal stuff. And finally, the government has signed a document to say he must be extradited to the U.S. And the people that he has been, you see these drug lords, they have communities that they rule over. You understand? And these communities pay the money for protection. So the police can get in there, right? And they, 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 they collect money from these people for protection, but also they find a haven to sell their drugs in there. So as it were, they are the government in that community. So that's what this guy was like. And so now the people in that community, you know, have stood up to protest to the government. And one of the things that they said was this Dudu's guy, that, that's his name, Dudu, <laughs> is, is nearer to God. How is a man who is killing people nearer to God? Who is destroying lives? You see how blind the society has become? They call evil good. And what is good is what is evil. To me, that shows confusion. A people who don't know anymore the difference between their right leg and their left leg. So they, they, there's a standoff now between the government and this community. I don't know how it's going to end. And the brethren were saying, we are doing a mission work there. Please pray for us. Because it looks like there can be that war which is going to cost a lot of lives. 
But where the devil is, those are the kind of things that you will find. Now, all that wickedness and all these things that are happening reached the throne of God. Amen? And God said, the cup is full, it's enough. But before ye can pass judgment, God knows. You remember the prayer of Jesus. Jesus said, the Father, I pray that you don't take them out of the world, but that you may keep them in the world. Meaning, I know there is no safety in the world. I know there are troubles in the world. What would have been the best thing was to take my people even now from the world. But the time is not yet come. I want you to keep them, to preserve them. And now God is calling to his people to totally come out of here. Don't be partakers in her fornication. Don't be partakers of her evil deeds because she's due for judgment now. She's due for judgment. Has God been calling people from times past? Has God been calling people? Let's go to the book of Genesis. The book of Genesis. I want to pray that the Lord will help me tonight. I want you to understand that God is calling us. From Genesis chapter 6 verse 7, I want to read. And the Lord said, I will destroy men whom I have created from the face of the earth, both men and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made men. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Amen. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. And Noah walked with God. Do you see the difference? Church, I want you to see. You see, we serve a God who is very fair because he's a righteous God and he will judge fairly. You, 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 you can't falter God in anything. You can't say God is unfair. When God decides to do something, he will have given men ample time to change his ways. And time and time again, God will have spoken to men to change his ways. And so Noah was a just man, and he walked with God. And Noah begat three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth also was corrupt before God. And the earth was filled with violence. Amen? Can we say this is foreign? Is it something new? Don't we have so much violence today? There's so much violence in the world. Violence in the homes, violence, even in the churches, sometimes you find there's violence. <laughs> violence everywhere. And the world was corrupt. And God looked upon the earth and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, the end of all flesh is come before me. For the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. And this is what he said to Noah. Make thee an ark of gopa wood. Rooms shall thou make in the ark and shall pitch it within and without with pitch. Now, God is preparing a, a, a place of refuge. You understand? For his people. And Noah builds the ark. And his sons were helping him. Noah was telling the people. Because all that time he was working, when God told him he was going to destroy the earth, Noah did not keep quiet. 
He shared with the people what was God's mission to accomplish. But when you read the story of Noah, did anybody go in the ark except Noah and his family? How many did go in there? Eight. Noah and his wife and his three sons and three wives for his sons. And the animals. And I've always said it is amazing that men will not have the sense of danger, but the animals do. Can you imagine these animals as they were going into the ark? As they were going into the ark and people were watching them. But nothing triggered in the minds of the people that this, there must be something to this thing. But they actually stood there and watched and probably they were laughing. When that tsunami happened, who perished in there? People perished. Those elephants, they like to ride and take a walk on them. They ran. They were chained to those palm trees. But men, when they sensed the danger, they ran high up into the mountains. Amen. They ran to higher ground. And God is amazed when he gives us a warning and we don't act. We just live like it, it, things are normal. Things are not normal, children of God. The world has gone cuckoo. The world has gone cuckoo. Just now, North Korea destroyed one of the ships of South. Isn't that spoiling for a fight? In the meantime, they are trying to fix the things, but more fires are coming up. They try and quench this one before they can even put it out. Another one starts. You know, until man realizes that God is in control, the devil is going to make sure he is going to weary them. And the leaders are wearied. But they keep plowing on. And to me, it shows the ignorance. You see, I said it the other day that when we are ignorant of the word of God, the devil will weary us. And he is going to make sure that we labor and we suffer because we lack the only knowledge that will save us, the knowledge of God. And so God has been calling men. Sodom and Gomorrah was a, was a similar situation, right? Was a similar situation. The cry of Sodom again because of wickedness had reached up to the heavens and the heavenly uh, host came down to have an on-site inspection. You know, sometimes the judges, <clears throat> before they can uh, make a final decision, sometimes they want to go on the site where the thing happened to really see what occurred here. Then they make their judgment. And the Lord came down with two angels to view the situation of Sodom and Gomorrah. And did they find anything? Church, did they find anything? They did. They did. Right in front of their eyes, the men of the city came on Lot's door. And they said, we want those men to come. We want those men that came into your house. We want to know them. So, you know, you talk about uh, homosexuality and all that. It didn't start today. It's an old trend that the devil has been parading for people. And so they wanted to know the heavenly beings. How daring can men be? You know, when the devil really is in you, you can be so daring. Because he is daring. Like we learned yesterday, that he is daring. He will stop at nothing because his hatred for God is so intense that he will stop at nothing. But the angels, when they saw that that was evident enough, that Sodom was ready for destruction. But there were people there. And they were told to come out. Lot and his family. 
He had daughters who were married in Sodom. He went to them, please, there are people who came to my house and they are telling me that they are here to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. We need to get out, come to the house so that we go. And these girls were married happily, you know, they were looking at whatever they had and they laughed to scorn this old man and said, what are you talking about? Until Lot couldn't wait, he went back. And the angel said, now if they are not coming, you and these who are here, get ready to do what? Get ready to go out. But for some reason, Lot and his family were just lingering. I don't know. They were just lingering. And finally, the angels were saying, come on, get out. It's almost daybreak and we can't destroy this city with you in here. Come on, move. But it's still they were lingering, right? And finally, the angels got hold of Lot and his wife. Maybe the other one got hold of the two girls. They had to get hold of them by the hand to get them out of Sodom. If the angels hadn't done that, those people would not have left it too. Lord would have died in there. And I say with some people, it will take God to come and grab them by the hand and get them out of this world in order to save them. Otherwise, on their own, my son, they won't come out. And some have come out of the world, but the world hasn't come out of them. Because Mrs. Lot, as they were running, it was good. The angels grabbed them and got them out of the city because they wanted to destroy the city. And as they were going, they were told, you don't look back. Amen? You don't look back. But as she was running, she was running. I, I, I don't know whether she was behind her family. She was the last one. I really don't know whether she was running ahead in front of them. I don't know. But the Bible says, as she was going, she looked back and she became a pillar of salt. She didn't get to the mountains. What was the reason? And Jesus says, remember Mrs. Lot. You know that verse? It's not very long. And Jesus doesn't elaborate on that verse. He says, remember Mrs. Lot. It's a warning that he's giving to us. As he, Christians, we need to realize that when God calls us out of Babylon, out of, oh, 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 of wickedness, we need never to turn back and look at Sodom and wish we were back there. I don't know what was in the heart of Mrs. Lot. Maybe she was thinking of her friends. Whether she was doubting the word of God, she, she, she wasn't so sure whether it was true they were going to destroy it. Or maybe it was because of the fire and brimstone that was coming and the sound of all that destruction that made her to turn back. I really don't know. But what I can believe for myself is that Mrs. Lord not in her heart, Sodom had not gone out. Sodom was still there. But was God calling people to come out of here? Yes. And is God calling us today to come out of here? Yes. God is still calling. Jerusalem, in Matthew 24, you can read it from verse 15. To 19. When Jesus was talking about the signs of his coming, sharing with the disciples, he warned them that when you shall see the abomination of desolation that Daniel spoke about, let nobody who is on the rooftop get down into the house to pick anything. Let those who are in the field never come back but you must flee for your life. And one of the things you got to pray for is that your flight be not in winter nor on the Sabbath day. And those who read history, you know that in AD 65, the Romans came and surrounded Jerusalem. They surrounded it. 
And it is so important, children of God, that we keep reading the scriptures and watching the word of God to see it being fulfilled. There were Christians in Jerusalem who kept reading the scriptures and who wanted to know when this time was going to be. When they saw the armies of Rome surround Jerusalem, they couldn't go out. Titus laid siege against Jerusalem. Nobody could go out. Nobody could go in. The reason was they wanted to put pressure on the people, torture them before they can move in to destroy them. And they knew that the Jews were so stubborn and stiff-necked. It's not only the Romans who knew they were like that. God knew too. And so, for some reason, God in his mercy. God in his mercy. Amen? You know, when I read that story, I, I, I said, we serve an awesome God he, who is always watching unto his children to protect them, to save them. God knew that in Jerusalem, there were Christians who needed to go out. For some reason, Titus decided to withdraw from Jerusalem. He had not made any contact, no engagement with the Jews. He just withdrew his armies and he left. When he left, the Jewish leaders got their armies together. And they followed after the Roman army. As they went out, because all this time the gate was closed. Nobody could go out. But when the Jewish armies went out, the gate was left open because they wanted to come back. As they followed Titus and his army, they left the gate open. The Christians who paid attention to the word of God, when they saw that opportunity, they remembered what Jesus said, and they all went out of Jerusalem. They never came back. The Jewish army came back and closed the gate. Nobody could go out, but the Christians were out. In AD 70, the Romans came back again. They surrounded Jerusalem. The siege was so strong that all the food they had was finished. The mothers started eating their children. The men began to eat the shoe skins. Tough were the Roman soldiers. They pressed so hard upon these people that they started dying. And the Roman army started attacking Jerusalem. Some of them they took and hung them on the crosses outside. It was a stench. And they went for the temple. The Roman leader wanted to save the temple, but the word of God had to prevail. Amen. You, you know, men can try, but you have to pay attention to the word of God. Because if God says something, he will do it. You remember Jesus when the disciples said, oh, look at this beautiful temple, how it is built. Jesus said, not even one stone will remain upon another. As he tried to, 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 to stop the soldiers from uh, you know, destroying the temple, but uh, the, uh, the soldiers were so angry because of the stubbornness of the Jews. They, they were just on the warpath. One just set up a torch in the temple. They 
and it just went up in flames. He couldn't save a thing. Every stone fell down completely. Completely. You remember Jesus said, your house is left unto you desolate until you say, blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. What about us today? God is saying, I'm going to do a thing. Amen, church? I'm closing now. God is saying, I'm going to do something in this earth. But before I do it, I have people that I want out of there. And those people, it's you and me. It's not only you and me sitting here today. There are many out there that God wants to bring in. And he wants you to tell them. To warn them. That they must run for their life. Jesus said. My sheep. Hear. My voice. <laughs> Amen. He says but. I have other sheep that are not of this flock that I must bring in. Jesus is talking about the people we were talking about yesterday who hear his voice. Amen. You got to hear. You see, people sit in the church, but they never hear the voice. Because what I understand about hearing is that when you hear something, when you say, Brother Ndrovo, I have heard you, my sister, it means you are going to do what I've said. That's hearing. Not just hearing the sound, but hearing when you have heard, you do. Then you say, I have heard. So Jesus is saying, I have sheep that hear my what? My voice. They know my voice. And my question tonight is, do you know the voice of Jesus? Do you know when Jesus is speaking to you, my son? Do you hear enough to be able to do something about it? You may sit in the church and not hear. But Jesus says, I've got some out there who are going to hear my voice. And I'm going to make them into one thing. And he's going to save them. And my prayer tonight is, as God is making the final call because the curtains are coming down on this earth, this world is not going anywhere. But it's moving according to time. Amen. According to schedule. It doesn't matter as I close. It doesn't matter, brother and law. You'll be in your van every day going to work. You are driving to your appointment with God. It doesn't matter you sit in the office and you're punching those figures. You are on the telephone dealing with clients. Every minute that is ticking away, my brother, is getting you closer to the appointed time. It can be a person who is sick in hospital, suffering from cancer, whatever it is. It can be the nurse or the doctor who goes in to attend those people. All of them in their day-to-day -day activities, they are moving closer to the appointed date, the day of judgment, where every man will give account for what they've done in the flesh. You might be, it might be 
an old man and an old woman in Africa. You understand what I'm saying? Walking with their stick, where, wherever they are coming from, they are going towards the destination appointed by God, the judgment day. It can be leaders, leaders of the world meeting in the United Nations. It can be the G8 or the G7 or the G20. You name it. They are all moving to the appointed time, the day of judgment. It can be a soldier fighting in Iraq or in Afghanistan. You understand what I'm saying? It can be a sailor who is moving um, merchandise from China to North America. All of those people are moving towards Judgment Day. All of them can be pilots flying planes high above the, 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 the skies. One day, they won't fly. They will be at the appointed time. And my prayer is, don't think you are going anywhere. I mustn't think I'm going anywhere. I mustn't think I'm going to end somewhere where I will not face that day. But all of us, we are moving towards it, it, It's beyond our control, amen? It's beyond our control. It's all in the hands of God. And everybody besides themselves are cooperating with God in some way to get to that appointed time. All of us. You can be sitting in the bus chatting, but you are getting there. Amen? I tell you, children of God, we need to be sober in these last days. The drunkenness of the world must be out of our minds. For Jesus is coming again. Nobody, even the dead, will not miss that appointment. Lying in their graves, oblivious of anything that might be happening. They don't know anymore. They are sleeping. Let me ask you a question. When you sleep at night, you don't know about anything. But does it mean your sleeping won't bring the morning? Uh, come on, church. Does your sleep not bring the morning? Because you don't know anything. You think the earth is not moving. The earth is moving. And tomorrow you wake up, it's another day. Amen. When the dead shall arise, it will be another day. It will be another day. We have to be sober. And my prayer is that God will help us as a people to prepare. That's the message tonight. The curtains are coming down. The final call is being made. Who shall stand on the Lord's side? Who shall say, Lord, I am here with you. When the curtains come down, I'm in. Amen? When the curtains come down, my name is in the book of life. Because it is only those with the, in the book of life who shall be saved. If you can get your name written everywhere, like I discovered when I came to North America, you have your name everywhere. Everybody has your name. They know you. Everywhere you go, you got to fill in forms for anything. And your name is everywhere. Now, if you can put your name in everything and everywhere for the things that will perish, why can't you put your name in the book of life? Then you can have eternal life. Isn't that something to think about? I want to pray. I want to pray. Just dead on our time here. I'm going to ask you to surrender all to the Lord. You see, when we were planning this series, we had a different view. 
but God wanted to talk to his people. I may never again probably stand before this congregation to do another series. But what has been so clear to me is that God wants this church to be ready and stop fooling around with your salvation and stop procrastinating but just be serious. And as we sing sweet hour of prayer, I'm going to kneel here and I'm going to make a call again. Come put your name down. The angels are here. They are writing. Will you lead us? Sweet hour of prayer. As we sing, I ask you to come. I want to pray with you. I don't know what God will do, but I know he wants to save you tonight. I pray that you will give your life to him, the only one who knows how to save you. Seasons of distress and grief, my soul has often found relief, and oft escape the tempter's We want to give you the opportunity to come. If you hear his voice tonight, I ask you to come. You're coming to no man, but you're coming to him who loved you and still does and still wants to save you and still has the door open for you. My prayer is that you will come. If you want to be baptized and come into a relationship with Jesus and receive the Holy Spirit of God to help you as you journey and prepare for his coming, the opportunity is there. The opportunity is there. One more time. And I'm going to pray. And still the door will be open if you want to come. 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 As he pleads with your heart tonight, you may not understand a lot, but you do understand that you need to be saved. That's good enough. He can work with that. He understands that. Come. Come. 
going to pray. And as I pray, as the Spirit of God is moving in your heart, why won't you give yourself to Him? The door is still open. Even tomorrow, the door is still open. When we finish these meetings, it is my prayer and my desire that you will have logged in your name with Jesus. Our Father, our Redeemer, I want to thank you for the work of the Holy Spirit in this place tonight. I want to thank you for the dear ones uh, that have heeded the call that have come. And it is my prayer that God, you will manifest yourself in their lives and receive them today as they have come and write their names in the book of life. And as they go through the process of baptism, Father, I pray that the anointing of the Holy Spirit will be given unto them to help them to prepare, to strengthen them for the storms that are coming upon this world. When none of us, if we don't have the Spirit of God, we shall not be able to stand. Father, I want to pray for those that are in the valley of decision. Those who do not know what to do at this time. That the same spirit will work with them and open their minds and give them understanding. And let them accept this final call that you are making to the entire world. That whosoever will may come. Uh, for Christ died for all. There is plenty good room in our Father's house. There is plenty power in the blood of Jesus. Uh, that as many as will come, they will all be washed and made clean. But it will never, never lose its power. And Father, we pray that that blood will be upon these dear ones who have come here tonight. And that you will strengthen them in their decision. In their commitment to working with you until the end. Uh, that the enemy who has tortured and destroyed their lives can be put to shame. And that your name will be glorified and honored and worshipped. I thank you for the spirit of healing and for the spirit of comfort. We know that on that day our tears shall be wiped away. For tears are a language that you understand. And I thank you, Father, for tonight, for your people that have come sincerely and earnestly wanting to fellowship with you. Now as they go home, I pray that the blessings of God will be upon them and bring them again tomorrow, Father, as we come to the final series of these meetings, that your spirit will be here to lift us up onto a higher ground where there is safety and refuge. In Jesus' blessed name we pray tonight. Amen. My friend, thank you so much. You've taken your time to watch this video. You've been blessed. You've been wondering how do we get to create such videos and share them to you for free? No, 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 no. They are not for free, my friends. We do spend a lot of time, money, and equipment to generate these videos. And that's why I'm here to invite you, if you have not already done so, to subscribe to Melvi Broadcasting Network, particularly to join this YouTube channel and all our other platforms and send us your donations. So please click the join button and send us your monthly donations. You can also go to PayPal if you're out of Africa or wherever you can send us your PayPal donation. Just go to the details that we're showing you down there and send us your donations on a monthly basis. 
Obviously, we also have a bank account. I've put the details right there. Send us your donations so that we can do these and many more projects we have of quality media products. We really want to use this platform to prepare you, your family, your friends, and your colleagues to be ready for the coming of Jesus Christ. He is about to come. And this is a small opportunity you and I have to use your blessing to bless us that we may bless others. So God bless you as you consider sponsoring this ministry. Melville Broadcasting Network is a divine voice out of Africa. God bless you.